vehicle momentum transport problem. We were interesting, interested in the velocity profiles in that pipe. So we got the pipe. I want to know if it's laminar flow, which can be modeled. Transient flow, we hate this because we cannot model it because it's between laminar and turbulent. So you cannot actually know if it's laminar or turbulent. And turbulent flow, which can be modeled very easily. All these are best described with Reynolds number. So instead of just telling you a laminar flow is when you have laminars, like this, flowing to the right, or instead of telling you turbulent, well, it's chaos. Let's actually use numbers to have a mathematical number to reference the flow. So the famous Reynolds number is a, a dimensional number, which means has no dimensions. So Reynolds number in the English system should be the same as the one on the SI system. And by definition is the ratio of inertial forces, which is here, versus viscous forces, which is this one here. You were to check out the units, all units will cancel and you will have no units at all. The Reynolds number by definition in a pipe will be the density times the velocity times the diameter divided by the viscosity. As you can see you will have a Reynolds number here, and you will have another Reynolds number right here because you have different velocities you have different diameters. So, instead of using, since we know uh, we use pipes, the pipe area flow will be defined as the area equals P divided by 4 diameter to the square power. So, if we want to, many times we are not given the, let's say, the diameter, we are given the area or many times we are given the velocity instead of the volumetric flow rate so how to relate this velocity with respect to this right here well just do this right here it is the Q volumetric flow rate the area as I told you before is right here so plug this value right here in the velocity in the Reynolds number so density times velocity which right now is Q divided by P divided by 4 times this diameter to the square power, don't forget this diameter, and the, the, the viscosity right here. So arranging and calculating and simplifying, you get this value right here, which is the Reynolds number when you are given the volumetric flow rate instead of velocity. So instead of, you can always check out the course content here. So for instance, if you want to check out how to measure some flow rate in piping, we got this block number four which is called flow measurement equipment. We essentially have the venturi tube, the orifice plates, which have essentially the same principle, which is the mechanical learning equation, and learn about other measurement equipment, because nowadays we have plenty of other devices that will help us to measure the flow rate in a pipe. Having the volumetric flow rate and calculating the velocity, we can go and check out directly with this formula. This is valid only on this circular cylindrical pipe. So what you were actually thinking in the Reynolds number as the diameter increases, what well you will tell me, well, as the diameter increases, Reynolds number increases. Well, actually not because velocity decreases with the power of two. So let's say 10 goes and increases to 20 you will say, wow, we have an increase of two times the diameter, so I will expect a Reynolds number twice as big. But actually, if you were to calculate the velocity, the velocity will go four times, because it will be twice to the second power, will be four times that, and they will cancel each other, and you will see that actually the Reynolds number is decreasing. So by definition, in a pipe with constant diameter, if you increase the diameter, you will lower the velocity, which will lower the Reynolds number. Let's make this little example. Mm, what is the Reynolds number given the density, velocity, and pipe inner diameter? So this is very important, guys, because we are talking about the flow, and the flow is carried only on this internal, say, 
area so we don't want to go out so this is not they give you the outside diameter it won't work because you are the fluid is not here so ignore that option you always need the internal or inner diameter and let's do it Reynolds equals this right here and it's very easy you just need to change everything to SI units one centimeter is 0 0.01 meters and one CP or centipois is just one divided by thousand so we plug numbers 1000 here, 1 meter per second here, 0 0.01 meter, and how much is that? We got the Reynolds number of 10,000 right here, and it's actually 10 to the 4th power. You're going to see later that this is transient flow, it's not enough to be turbulent flow, so we want to avoid this right here. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user friendly interface. So, for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here the pump block. Then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.